Good evening, everybody. Thanks for uh, coming out to the April 25th, 2019 uh, uh, school board meeting. And could we all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Regal, could you call the roll, please? Uh, Dr. Allen Stuck? Present. Mr. Fleischer? Sorry. Yeah, here. <laughs> Ms. Larson? Here. Dr. Martin? Yep. Ms. Minji? Here. Mr. Sinto? Here. Ms. Wiedemann? Here. Mr. Feinberg? Here. Thank you. I want to thank uh, everybody, the families and the kids, uh, for the science uh, exhibits out in the hallway. Uh, they were fascinating and the kids did a great job uh, I learned a little bit about crickets and I learned a little bit about earthworms um, I didn't have time to hit every table but uh, the tables uh, that I was able to spend some time with were very informative so thank you very much um, uh, before I start the public session I just would also like to make an important announcement the, the school district is in need of school bus drivers. Our children want to come to school and we want them to arrive safely and on time. Please consider this opportunity to interact with our students. Information is on our website and you will shortly see lawn signs placed at each of our district schools. And this part's very important. We will train interested drivers you don't need to be an experienced bus driver in order to apply uh, for these positions so if you if you have uh, neighbors family friends in the district that you think might be interested please encourage them um, and hopefully we'll get a bunch of applicants uh, our first item in public session actually uh, we'd like to have uh, Dr. Whitehead, thanks for bringing this, this, all this great stuff to us this evening. Good evening, everyone. I, I seriously don't need a microphone, but this is how loud I am. All right. Again, uh, I thank the school board, Dr. Rushi, and thank all the uh, wonderful volunteers from from Chatham Park to help put together this outstanding science fair. So on March 15th, we had our 18th annual science fair at Chatham Park, which was a true team effort. Uh, tonight with us, we have our science fair co-chairs, Ms. Kelly Rudnick and Dr. Christine Black, as well as our science fair winners and their families. Uh, there was 100% enthusiasm and support throughout the school community for this great event. Uh, with the support of our HAS, our Home and School Association, the Science Fair at Chatham Park has now become a, a true educational tradition. Uh, the partnership created through the Science Fair assists in further enriching a rigorous program at Chatham Park. Our students were given a vehicle to apply to analytical curiosity and communication skills to topics of their choice. Uh, this year we had over 50 projects and over 100 fourth and fifth graders participated. The community involvement was amazing and, and impressive. We also had approximately 40 judges from the community, including working physicians and scientists and our Haverford High School honor students, many of whom attended Chatham Park, so it's nice to have um, some alumni back to support it. And they were all there to challenge our students' thinking and their knowledge. And truthfully, this is the first science fair at an elementary or even a middle school level where I actually heard our students um, defending and talk about the limitations of a study. That's where you really know that they really did their work and they were able to address the uh, very rigorous questions that they were asked. Um, lastly, to build future enthusiasm and scientists, the addition of the in-school program, so we, our students were able to run through the program during the day and have some practice uh, with the lower grades, so it was really a big help to them as they prepare for the evening program. So, but expose the science for opportunity to our younger students as well. And we know that questioning is a deeper skill than answering. 
So the ability to question is much more in-depth. So it just shows that they have a, a greater uh, skill set and knowledge understand of what they're presenting. So the sooner we can promote their understanding about this uh, idea, then the, the better. So congratulations again to all of our participants, our science fair volunteers, and all of our winners. So I just want to run through the names uh, quickly. So with the topic, so which toothpaste whitens the best? We have Brady Carlin, Ma Mary Orner, and Lila Thompson. So they're here. Stand up, ladies. Go ahead, stand. So then we had another topic, Temperature Matters, which was Shane Durkin, Thomas Ely, and James Shallow. So they were figuring out about the magnets. And for the temperature magnets, we to get to the strength. And then we also had the Science of Spotting, which is Leo Sachs. So this was, this was our fifth grader. <laughs> and then our, from our fourth grade, we had Earthworms or No Earthworms. So Mary Catherine Schwartz uh, presented that topic. And Dr. and Dr. Martin did let us know that this was a topic at his own university that he was uh, addressing in his own classroom. So that, that was great to hear. So uh, then we had Neve Broderick, which was Melodies and Memories, uh, classical music and the different types of music and what is, um, what's helped you study the most. So Neve is able to present on that topic. And then uh, lastly, the secret to happiness was Asher Brooks, James Fingerut, and Sebastian Lynn. We learned a lot about cricket. Uh, and their muscle structure. So thank you to all the families that came out tonight. Thanks for the support of Chatham Park, our home school association, and thanks for the school board for allowing us to share this uh, tonight's great learning opportunity. And now you guys can uh, head out, but thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Yes, thank you all for being here. George is getting it. Got it. Okay, on to public session. We only have uh, one speaker signed up in advance this evening. That's uh, Rich McGlory. Rich, you want to come up and yes. give us your name and address? And you know the drill. Three minute warning. Three minute. You'll hear the tone. He's aware. <laughs> you do not escape, Mr. Parker. You have the long version. Thank you. The redacted uh, version. version. Are you serving him? You get this version. <laughs> now I'm serving him with uh, a more uh, reading law material. In case <laughs> we have to, uh, I'll mention it here. Uh, nothing important, just for the review. Okay, I'm Rich McGlory. I live at 1246 Dill uh, Road, Havertown, Pennsylvania. I still live there. I just brought it very quickly. I just want to thank you all for what happened in our school district for Autism Awareness Month from Blue Friday to the lessons in the classrooms in the middle school and all over our district. All right. I was very happy to hear of all the things that we did. And I'm dressed in blue for Thursday night before Blue Friday, too. <clears throat> um, and that's important. And I even heard from Susanna Horner. She is the person who is the social worker at CHOP who coordinates all of their uh, next steps programs for caregivers and professionals who deal with, who deal with autism. Her uh, child goes to the middle school and she told me about their wonderful program that they had in that classroom. And she is someone, I gave you her contact information to, uh, uh, she is very willing to help with, with hooking someone or, or the district up with the CHOPS programs for professionals and caregivers. And I'm sure also the, the Kinney Institute at St. Joe's would be willing to help 
and the same with even Drexel University has a as a new autistic uh, uh, education program. Uh, but I think it's important because we're all learners in this, and I think the best part of, Autis uh, of Autism Awareness Month in our district, we all became more aware of what autism is and what we have to do for our children. It's we have more and more kids coming today. And Ms. Menchie, with you, I know I keep saying and giving you and giving you props for what you did, and you keep humbly saying it wasn't me, it was the teachers and everybody, but I know that every idea needs a catalyst and some sort of a leader to bring it to people's attention. And what I know for sure is that if we put a bunch of teachers in a room together, that they will find ways to do anything that we need them to do. We are only limited by the creativity of our teachers and our parents and our leaders that we do. And you know, you have this letter, I'm not gonna read it or say anything, but the decisions that you make as leaders are crucial for the development and the well-being of all of our children in our school district. And in particular, this month's case, the well-being of autistic children. Okay, And that is important. And I also got in trouble with my wife. Of course, she said, well, you bought everybody in the, on the school board copies of Uniquely Human. How come I didn't get a copy of it? And I said, honey, you have my copy. You have my copies of, of Uniquely Human. And she says, but I can't read them with all your underlines and notes in the margins and notes in the margins and things that we said. And uh, just I want to read all these points, but real quickly, if you just give me one more minute to finish up, please. All right, about why I believe that it is best to, to educate autistic children with typically developing children is this. Human beings are hardwired to be socially intuitively, but autism poses challenges to developing that intuition. Consider the organic way we learn language. A mother doesn't sit her toddler down and explain the parts of speech or how to conjugate a verb. We learn by being exposed to language and immersed in it. All right, uh, wait a second, I can learn how to turn pages here quickly. We listen and observe in order to construct our own knowledge of language. In the jargon of language development research, we induce the rules of language, and as a result, result we learn the meanings of words and how to use them to express comp complex ideas. And that is the importance of integrating autistic children and our programs as much as possible. That is easier said than done, as our teachers and our principals well know who deal with those problems on an everyday basis. But I want to leave you with this one story from my son, who just happened a couple weeks ago. He drops little Johnny off at school. They walk inside the front door and they hand little Johnny off to his teacher or an assistant. And Danny said to me, it was so cute that the way Johnny went, just walked right in and put his hand in, in, in Miss Morris's hand, and then one of his classmates, he put his hand out to another classmate who grabbed his hand too. And it was just so cute to think what a improvement that is for him and how meaningful that is for children. And if we could just add to that image a typically developing child clasping hands and the, tip, and the regular classroom teacher holding the hand of that child. If I were Norman Rockwell, I would paint you that picture. If I were Maya Angelou, I would paint you that poem of those children, but I'm not. So I just leave you with that image and the thought of Maya Angelou. They won't remember what they said or what they did, but what they remember is how they made them feel. And that is the most important thing with autistic children. They are heroes in my eyes through my picking up my grandchild at DCIU every day for two years at Cooperstown 
for two years, I got to see the faces of other autistic children every day. They all are heroes. They overcome adversity every day of their lives. And they need our help all along the way. And thank you for what you do. Bye. Thank you. And that's it. That's it. Thank you. Yeah. Is there anyone else in the public who would, would like to speak this evening? Okay, seeing none, uh, we'll move on to our student rep, Elizabeth Jocelyn. Hello, my name is Elizabeth Jocelyn and I'm a junior at Haverford High School. Thank you again for having me back to present tonight. Even with spring break, activities did not stop for students over at the high school and the busy month of May is just around the corner. All spring sports teams are working extremely hard and are hoping to pull off winning seasons over the next couple of weeks. Girls softball is off to a strong start with a 9-3 and three record along with a 7th place district ranking and the boys baseball team holds a close 4-5 and five record having only lost three games by one run. Playing against the strongest teams in the district, the boys tennis team has posted a 5-4 and four record while the boys volleyball team is ranked 6th in the district with a 5-2 and two record. Boys and girls track are both headed to the Penn Relays today and over break the boys track team placed first in the Father Judge Relays and is hoping to score well in the Central League Championships on May 8th to go along with their undefeated season. Girls Across is hosting a teacher appreciation game tonight before their non-league game against Mary and Mercy, while Boys Lacrosse has been heavily involved in community service projects. Over the spring break, the team spent an afternoon volunteering in Philadelphia at the warehouse for the Share the Food project, and on April 13th, they hosted the annual Trent Stetler Mental Health Awareness Day, which raised over $13,000 for mental health awareness. This helps to fund the Minding Your Mind programs throughout the district, as well as various speakers and parent meetings in the community. On April 11th, Student Senate hosted the semi-annual Red Cross, Red Cross Blood Drive. Any students over the age of 16 could choose to take a little time out of their day and go down to the gym and donate blood. We had over 70 donors this year, so the event was extremely successful. Haverford's Finest was held on April 12th, and this year's winner was Shane Burke. The entire event was filled with comedy and impressive performances, and they raised over $5,000 for this year's blast. Also on April 12th was the Day of Silence run by the Haverford Rainbow Alliance. The National Day of Silence is a student-led event where students could vow to take silence to highlight the silencing and erasure of the LGBTQ plus community in both the Haverford community and the world. Many students bought pins to show their support for the community and many teachers also showed their support with Rainbow H Pride shirts. Although the excitement of the spring musical has ended, the Drama Club recently received the great honor of being nominated for nine different Cappy Awards. The Cappies mimic the Tonys or the Oscars and act as a way for regional theater to be appreciated and acclaimed by other schools and critics. To be nominated for nine separate awards is a major honor. Over spring break, over 60 students traveled abroad with the Haverford language trips. Students traveled to Greece, Italy, and France, and although returning to school may have been hard after the excitement of Europe, those who traveled were ecstatic to get their, share their incredible experiences with their classmates. Last but not least, tomorrow night is the junior prom. It's gonna be held at Drexelbrook, and all students attending are looking forward to going. Thank you again for allowing me to present tonight, and I look forward to coming back in May. Thank you. The next item on our conference agenda, uh, it's, it's nice we should have more like this. Uh, someone's going to give us money. Uh, I'd like to uh, welcome the members of the Education Foundation, who I understand are going to present grant fund checks. Good evening, everyone, and uh, thank you for welcoming us here tonight. Uh, my name is Jim Blumenstock. I'm up here with Tyler Wagner, Kathy Kearns, and Ellen Fisher. We're all members of the Haverford uh, School District Education Foundation. And for those in the audience that don't know too much about us, we're an all-volunteer local Haverford Township organization that spends our year raising dollars to help fund creative and innovative programming that is well beyond the normal school district budget. We've been around about 
15 years now. So um, we're here tonight uh, to recognize and help fund uh, two really interesting and, and innovative uh, programs that fit our mission and will help uh, a couple of programs uh, launch over the next couple of months. So Tyler, you? Yep, uh, so the first one, uh, Dr. Whitehead's here tonight, so that's great. So the, this will be uh, given to him for uh, in his school at Chatham Park. Um, uh, Five thousand dollars is going towards uh, the playground, the the pavement in the back there. It's going to be painted with. Um, it was redone back there, and it was completely blank. Used to have a big map on it, and uh, so now they're going to have um, a couple different things like a track around, basketball courts. Oops, sorry. There you go. Uh, so it should be great. Um, so the the kids at Chatham will have uh, new ways to play and hang out at the on the playground um, and do things. So uh, congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Our second funding tonight is um, one we're very excited about uh, being supportive of is um, something called the BASIS program. And for those that don't know it, it's a, um, a program that's been around an initiative for a little over a year in the district and was launched with the support of uh, the board as well as the administration and uh, now the staff and the students within our district to help make our school community more inclusive, more diverse, and more supportive of uh, its student population. So uh, we wanted to, um, we spent a number of months uh, sitting with um, uh, the committee from the school's district standpoint, talking through and workshopping where we had a good fit with our mission to support the program. And so what we have uh, come up with is initial seed money of $20,000 uh, for the program with uh, future years uh, where we're going to sit down and talk about how we can do even more for the program. So Sarah, I know uh, Jen's not here tonight, but Sarah and Jen have been uh, very patient and very, um, very diligent with us to explain, you know, what the initiative is about, what its accomplishments have been so far, and where they want to take it uh, for the years coming forward. Oh, and we appreciate your support. So thank you very much for this. All of you. Oh, you want to go ahead? You got something? I was going to mention the Twilight Run. Oh, okay, go ahead. So, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I just want to say, too, um, you've seen the signs around town. Um, the Twilight Run is our big fundraiser. That is Saturday. Um, so if you know people who can sign up, if you'd like to sign up, we encourage everybody to come out. It's a fun event. It's not just the run. It's also uh, you get the night on the town events, so you can walk around town. You get free slices of pizza. A lot of the local businesses have chipped in, and uh, it's a pretty cool event. So uh, if you're around, please come out. Uh, it's a it's a big supporter of all the the funding that we get to give back to the school district. So it's uh, it's right in front of the high school. Can't miss it. Yeah. Starting so. at 3 p.m., we'll have a kids fun zone with a moon bounce that we got a certificate of insurance for. <laughs> 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 We're good to go. So uh, lots of fun events, face painting for the kids, and then uh, the race and the party on the town is the big thing. A community, uh, business community has been very generous. Free pizza, free drinks at local pubs, sodas too, um, ice cream at Kaufmeyer's, uh, Citrellas has given. Uh, who else? We're uh, water. Yeah. pops, water ice, <laughs> sand, <laughs> sands, McGillicuddy's. So please, uh, for twenty-five dollars, you have a party on the town after and it's, the race. Uh, it's a major fundraiser that goes to support those dollars that uh, we can give out to the, the schools themselves. So. And yeah. I can attest yeah. that the post-race snacks are excellent. Yeah. Oh, oh. <coughs> yeah. Good. We're on it. <laughs> thank, right. you. thank you. See you Saturday. We hope. Thank, thank you again. just want to repeat that thank you all for your, your long time uh, support for various programs in the district. And I know, you know, your board's all volunteers and we really appreciate the good work that you've been doing for a long time. So thanks for this this evening too. Next item on our agenda, a good segue, is the basis presentation by our high school students. Good evening, thank you. I didn't realize we were gonna get $20,000 for this presentation, but. Uh, Let the record state you don't. That'll go right in my account. 
Uh, but welcome. We wanted to give you a little glimpse into our, our student voice and our basis work this year. Uh, we have uh, many different ways we communicate with students, face-to-face -face email surveys, uh, but we wanted to uh, add something this year. So we had our students here who presented at our faculty meeting on the work they've done uh, with the help of Ms. Christensen, uh, Dr. Quinn, and myself, uh, the work they've done this year uh, in not just basis work, but just the work in general with building relationships. So um, they presented the faculty meeting. It was such a success. We wanted to show you kind of what they did for the teachers, how they professionally developed uh, the teachers through their perspective and their voice. Um, and it went so well. The next faculty meeting, we had the uh, young Democrats and young Republicans show up uh, to uh, present on their voter registration drive. And we had over 85% of our students in our senior class have already registered to vote. We're close to 90% right now. So uh, that's just a huge accomplishment for us. Uh, last year we were at about 56%, so now we're over 90%. And it was all uh, student driven. Uh, so, we're, so we're very happy. So we're really looking for other ways to uh, get the students out in front of the teachers to increase our committees with the students. Uh, and they do a great job. So without further ado, the high school students. Yeah. Hello, my name is Tommy Barnes. And I'm Jack O'Leary. And we're the co-presidents of the Rainbow Alliance at Hopperford. So the Rainbow Alliance is the hub for the LGBTQ plus population at the high school. Um, and it consists of the LGBTQ community and other allies that uh, foster inclusion and kind of tolerance within the school. So we kind of want to go through some different things that our club did throughout this year. Uh, we started off the year with a Love is Love is Love bake sale on Valentine's Day to raise money for homeless LGBTQ youth at the Valley Youth Center. This was the first kind of school event as a club, and we were met with lots of interest, passion, and kind of energy from the student body, so it was such a success. It was a great like starting off point to get our message out to the club. So then before spring break, as kind of Liz mentioned earlier, we took part in the national, nationwide day of silence, which was when we kind of, again, omitted our voices for the entirety of the school day to recognize and highlight the silent struggles and adversity that LGBTQ teens face on the daily. So almost all of our members took part and we really pushed for vocal supporter pins this year. So anyone who didn't really feel comfortable going silent for the day, they could still put on the pin with a vocal supporter label and show their support. So we were met with tons of pins throughout the school, plus the teachers with the um, pride t-shirts and everything. It was, it was really special. That same day, we also hosted the Philadelphia Gay Men's Chorus and we had about 75 students and faculty attend. So they did a little 30 minute concert of different song selections. And at the end, there was this amazing question and answer portion where the audience got to hear like powerful stories, both like negative and positive from the members of the chorus, which was super impactful and super meaningful for the student body to hear people out of high school, post high school, post secondary school and everything. Um, and how life is for them and what they've overcome, what they've dealt with, and just how great their lives are now. And so something we're hoping to finish the year off with is definition posters. So deriving off the 10th grade health curriculum, going into more terminology associated with the LGBTQ community that deals with like misused or uncommon terms to kind of further the education and kind of attention to you know these specific terms and everything. Um, and then at our meetings, it's mainly discussion based, focusing on this year, specifically pronoun use, the HMS health curriculum, and being LGBTQ at Hyperford. Okay, so one of our biggest priorities at the faculty meeting was really to emphasize to the teachers the importance of pronouns and how to use them and be respectful with students. So over the past years, I've seen a big difference in the amount of teachers that do ask students their pronouns, but when talking to the club, we realized that not every single teacher asks students their pronouns. We really just wanted to explain that at the faculty meeting. So we kind of asked them to reach out by asking the students to write down their pronoun through whatever they usually do on the first day of class, whether it be an index card or a letter of introduction or an email, because it's really important for the students to understand that the teachers do care about their pronouns and it makes them feel more comfortable and less alienated in the environment. Um, a really big thing that we wanted to emphasize is it's a lot of times mistakes happen with pronouns, but it's important to correct yourself to show that you do care about identifying them correctly and the mistakes show that you're putting in the effort. And we also really commended the 10th grade health teachers for everything they've done to educate the student body about the LGBT community, about gender, about sexuality, through something that they do called gender bread and a lot of other things in their curriculum. Um, and it really helps to not only make the students in the LGBT community feel more included, but it also helps their peers like understand who they are. 
so we also wanted teachers to correct microaggressions in unstructured settings like hallways or the cafeteria, um, just so that they understand that using derogatory terms is not okay at our school. And then we also encourage, again, the reaching out to students to kind of initiate that direct contact of starting the conversation around the pronouns for the uh, students that are involved with that. Um, we know it's a very small population within our school that kind of has, they identify with different uh, pronouns that are usually assigned to them. Um, so we kind of emphasize still the importance of, you know, uh, dealing with those students and in a productive and kind of efficient way. And the biggest thing is for students to feel accepted, students in the LGBT community, um, is knowing that their teachers are allies. And the best way we could do this is through visual representation. So as you can see, our two teacher sponsors made an H Pride logo that kind of has the um, rainbow pride flag flag within the H symbol to show that Haverford is a supporter. And then also we have these positive H space posters that Dr. Quinn made that kind of say, the, uh, like the classroom and the school is a place where LGBT kids are accepted and respected. And really just overall, like we really wanted to emphasize to the teachers about being an ally, about using pronouns correctly. Everything that we're doing is just to make us and everyone else in the LGBT community feel more included. So I'd like to thank you for letting us speak today. Thank you. Can I ask a question before they step down? Uh, how often do you meet? Um, we probably meet like once or twice a month. So we usually, like, um, a lot of our events are, like, planned out, so then we kind of have, like, things prepared before, like, our bake sales and, like, the Day of Silence. We had, um, we had uh, someone come in and uh, film a video for H Vision so that students would understand what the Day of Silence is. So we always have, like, a few meetings per month just so that we're always there, and it's important that it's also, like, a social aspect of the club that they feel like they have a club where they feel safe. Great, thanks. Yeah. Good evening. My name is Georgina Williams. And I'm Ariel Gray. And we are presidents of the African American Cultural Enrichment Club. Um, this past fall, we had our trip to the African American Museum in Washington, D.C. This was an amazing experience for the entire student body to attend. Together, we explored the different aspects of African American history and culture through interactive museum exhibits that highlighted African American achievements such as sports, music, film, art, and more. And for Black History Month, we had various different activities that we did school-wide. Some of those activities where we made posters that we um, put up all around the school just to raise awareness to African American culture and just to highlight achievements of African Americans in our history. We also had announcements about each day, um, just representing a fact or two about African Americans and their impact. And we had H Vision videos raising awareness to different concerns in, within the African American community, such as um, using of different words and different um, areas that are of our concern. Also, African American Culture Enrichment um, presented Black Cinema Series, which was during a week of Black History Month where students could come down after school and watch movies that highlighted um, black directors, actors, and actresses. Um, some movies we presented were uh, Black Panther, Hidden Figures, and The Hate You Give. And after each movie or so, we would have debriefs talking about what the movies covered and just kind of talking about the feelings of everybody that was there and how they really related to the movie. And lastly, our big success for the entire um, month of Black History was our second annual Soul Food Night. Um, this time it was a huge success. We brought around 150 plus individuals and we opened the event up to not only students and teachers but also community members. So we had a lot of support. We had donations from Giant, Morgan's Food Market, Delaney's and various other areas. And Giant was our biggest donator um, and they donated around 100 pieces of fried chicken. So that was a big, big accomplishment. Um, we also had a dance special performed by the um, at Haverford Middle School dance team and we had um, some interactive games such as Jenga and trivia games to kind of promote inclusion and a little bit more education in our event and overall the event was great we raised a lot of cultural awareness and we had a lot of support I and mean, we thank everybody for their um, support throughout the entire year planning this and also executing this um, in such a great manner. 
And we plan to have another one the next year yep. and furthermore. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Thank guys. You. Get the date out for that one. And I can tell people, like, mm -hmm. just go there for dinner. Right. Yes. <laughs> go there for dinner. Yes. yes. All right. Thank you, guys. Oh, hello. My name's Carly Gannon. My name's Katie Redding, and we attended the UPenn conference. Um, so basically what this conference was, was um, 14 area, or schools from the Pennsylvania, Philly area, I guess, attended uh, University of Pennsylvania. And we were able to be split into different groups, like little groups, and they discussed issues based on discrimination, just feelings of isolation, how to get over problems that occurred, um, and then yeah, so that was like little things. And then there was also a poetry slam, which was really cool, where people were able to perform poems that they've worked on in the past or throughout the day at Penn. And it was really great to listen to people just really expressing their emotions and their power, just like they, they could feel like they could just come out in just a belonging environment <clears throat> and express issues where they did feel like they didn't belong in their schools and stuff. Um, and then something that we really got from this is that people, students specifically, because it was from school, um, students, people don't feel like they belong in their schools. They're feeling isolated or just uncomfortable. And when people s shared these stories, it was just really eye-opening because personally, I don't experience this and I might not see it. But the thing that we need to recognize is it's not an out of sight, out of mind thing. Like we must take initiative that stuff is happening and people don't feel like this. So I was just thinking about people at Haverford and it just upsets me that there are kids who do feel like this. So we have to realize this and then take action. So we have to be also along with that, we have to be mindful that different students interpret different situations in different ways. So something that might be really little to one person is a really big deal to another. So we need to be aware that everyone is different in their own ways and it's exp like, what was the word? Uh, respect differences amongst, amongst everyone. Because you can't talk someone out of feeling it a certain way. You just have to embrace it and then accommodate to them. So that's what we got from it. <laughs> um, we put emphasis on the faculty meeting, two major ideas we believe that can help to start fix student isolation, and that is uh, student-teacher relationships. So we believe that icebreakers, so that's like the first day of class, you go in, you, it's more of like an introduction, like you say, like fun facts about yourself and people get to guess like who you are and they get to learn more about you than just what you look like on the surface. But the one major thing we believe as students is that a student-teacher teacher relationship is key to students feeling welcome and comforted in school and we believe that like since you're in a class probably like five months, like a semester class, you're with that teacher for a long period of time. And we believe like a teacher reaching out and sending an email like, hey, you're doing really good. Like if you need to talk about anything, like I'm here. Like sometimes we get like power school, like cookie cutter comments where it's like, is a pleasure to have in class. And that just really doesn't cut it for us. Like we want like an emotional, like close relationship with a teacher and others peers as well. Thank you. Hi, my name is Nee. I'm Tommy. We are the co-presidents of No Place for Hate. So with No Place for Hate, our kind of message and our club is all about, it's a pool of students who are passionate about the message of No Place for Hate and want to work to ensure that tolerance, empathy, and inclusivity are advocated for and established within HHS. So something new this year to No Place for Hate, we were in need of another activity. So we're very known, as we'll talk about later for our fish, but we need something else that was more widespread that get the whole student body involved. So we came up with the idea of kindness campaigns. So a kindness campaigns are just basically little events that um, splurge a lot of happiness among the student body. So the goal is honestly just get the student body smiling for a little portion of their day. Um, and it's also get people knowing about No Place for Eight and interested in the club to hopefully come to a few more meetings. Uh, our format has usually been greeting the student body at the three main entrances as, the entrances as they enter the school. We usually have about 25 volunteers from with our club who come in early as 6.45 in the morning with the energy needed to make these mornings a success. So on the board we have in October for Halloween we did a compliment with a spider ring. So at the doors we hand out little spider rings and gave a compliment like, 
who be spooky, be wonderful, and have a great day and stuff. Um, we followed that kind of same format in January for semester one finals, where instead of spider rings, we gave out pencils and inspirational stickers like, you got this, A plus, to the people entering the school. And then we're really excited for our final one upcoming next Friday, which is going to be one and a half inch stickers with little smiley faces on them, while we're giving everybody kind of more verbal compliments of, let's finish out the school year, let's, get the, let's finish this strong. Um, so those are our three main ones that we did this year. The reception of these campaigns has been positive and effective as we've both heard chatter and as more attention through these campaigns as we've seen increased involvement and increased kind of like, oh, when's the next one? We want, we want to be a part of this. Um, what's going on? Like, I'm so like, this is so cool. And so we're definitely going to continue these next year and hopefully make them a little bit more frequently than just three a year. Um, so now I just want to talk to you about fish bowls, kind of our, um, the main thing that what we're known for. Um, so fishbowls are student-led discussions. They um, are usually, they act as catalysts for students to talk about societal issues associated with Hartford. Um, so how they kind of work is that they comprise of two circles, um, the inner circle and the outer circle. So it, the inner circle has the freedom to talk for an unlimited amount of time. Um, and they kind of bounce ideas around with each other. Um, and then we have the outer circle who, is there to observe, but if they do feel like they um, would like to speak, we do keep an open seat for them um, so that they can join the conversation at any period of time that they would like to. Um, we also welcome faculty members. Um, in the past, we've had very widespread support from our faculty members and um, teachers, which makes us feel very um, loved and supported. Um, so faculty can join us. They're also um, they're in the perimeter of the room. They kind of sit in. They um, absorb in all the information. Of course, um, they're um, of course they're just there to observe. They're not really there to voice their opinions. And through um, through that, they are able to become more educated about their students and understand the way that they feel. Um, and we also want to put emphasis on this um, kind of activity because students spend so much time in schools. We spend five out of seven days. Sometimes we spend up to 12 hours in Harvard High School. So it's very important for um, this kind of understanding to be established between the student and the teacher. Um, it helps them build empathy and, again, um, avoid ignorance within our school. Um, so in the past, we've had fishbowls about race, peer, gender, and sexuality. But this year, we wanted to focus on more broad topics that apply to more um, individuals, such as mental health and how to be an ally. Um, we're also trying to plan our upcoming one, May. I think it's 29th, Wednesday, May, May 29th. 29th. If any of you guys would like to come and show support, we always love. Um, Dr. Rushi has been present in one of our previous ones. I believe it was mental health. Um, and something like we love about this year especially is as you can see last year we're kind of very focused topics and with the broader topics this year is to account for the increased kind of population at these meetings. So it used to be 20, 25 people at the kind of discussions. This year we're kind of dealing with like 60 to 70 people at each discussion. So we're really trying, I think we're doing a good job of like getting broader topics to bring even more people in and have any more beneficial conversation with a lot of different viewpoints. And also from the student end, um, I've gotten countless of my peers come up to me um, telling me about how like fishbowls have really opened their eyes, how um, they've gained so much um, more understanding and more empathy for their classmates, um, kind of like understanding them on another level than just somebody who they pass by and see in the halls. So. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you again. I'm Katie Redding again. I also attended the Coatesville Spirit Summit, which was um, on March 29th. A couple of us here um, took a field trip during the school day up to Coatesville, and other high schools were in attendance, like Cumberland Valley, this Coatesville School, and others. And we broke up into two sessions, and one was a student panel talking to us about how they identify problems at their school, and they gave us ideas on how to act. Like, they had a culture day where students of different cultures made, like, a trifold and, like, taught their peers what it's like to be them. And they also taught us how they do positive messages in the bathroom, like on the stalls, like when you go in and close the door, it says, oh, like you're awesome, like you're beautiful, like have a good day, like just positive reinforcing messages to know like we're all in this together. 
And the second session that I attended was with another teacher from a different school, and it was kind of like a simulation of each person in a group got a different role, and it was like how to react to a person who has a different problem. Like it's, one of them was um, a student in a wheelchair at a basketball game. Like how would you approach them? How would you include them in everything? And it taught us how to be in, like add inclusion and how to be like sympathetic with others. Thank you. So I wanted to kind of follow up with this presentation that provided hopefully a small glimpse of the many ways that student voice is evident in the um, Haverford High School and how it's connected to the basis work. Um, at, at, we, at the beginning of the year, we talked a little bit about the general overview basis philosophy. And on May 23rd, I'll be here to give an update of the whole year on our basis work. But if you remember, one of the four main mind matter pillars is active participation. And in order for us to really build authentic belonging and a culture in our schools, student voice and active participation is an absolute fundamental component. And when I watched these students, sit in a faculty meeting, which for some adults to get in front of an entire high school faculty and have a conversation is a challenge and a hurdle. And to watch them do it seamlessly, flawlessly, um, kind of watched Mr. Donaghy allow that platform and put that platform in place for not only active student voice to hear it, but actually to engage in dialogue, offer suggestions and provide learning. Um, was astounding. But then to see the authentic relationship with our teachers and the reception and the engagement and the 100% support that they were showing to the students was a clear illustration of what's happening um, with you know, a small glimpse of what's happening at the high school as, as far as active participation and authentic student voice. So I complimented them, but also want to just take a moment to say, um, an amazing job and thank you to Mr. Dunnegy, the high school administration, but also the high school teachers because um, this is one of many examples that happen on a continual basis and that we're hoping to not only highlight, build from, but also grow. So thank you guys tonight um, and if you have any questions, they'll be happy to answer. They knew they had a time limit, so if you were feeling rushed, they were, you did a great job <laughs> sticking to the time limit. They'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. I wanted to make a quick comment. I just want to commend you because the work you're doing is what makes a culture of inclusion and belonging. And it's the most important thing. So thank you so much for all your work. You're here. That's great. It's the day before the junior prom. I did tell them that if they're, you know, when, when the questions have answered, you feel free to leave. So thank you guys. We'll see you in the morning. Right? Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> the last item on our conference agenda is a, it's a glory hallelujah. <laughs> We've been talking about a new Linwood School for a long time, um, and I believe that this evening we're actually going to go ahead and award the bids to get the project started, so that's very exciting. So we have uh, Lynn Blausch and uh, Ryan Orr from uh, uh, KCBA, KCBA uh, to give us an update. Uh, so once again, Ryan Orr from KCBA Architects. Uh, yes, we're excited to be here. Today's the day. It, it seems like it's been a long time coming, um, and so we're finally here. Uh, so as a quick uh, recap as we, as we move forward here, um, we will be building a new uh, Linwood Elementary School. Um, the bids came in favorably for us uh, in the district, and uh, we're looking at uh, beginning construction um, in June. So as a, as a look at how that's going to um, progress here, we're going to run through um, 
that sequence here uh, one more time. And for those in the audience who are seeing it for the first time, um, the existing Linwood Elementary School is there in white in the center. Uh, and we build a 30-foot safety barrier between the, the existing Linwood Elementary School and our uh, new building. So our new building is once again going to go in the field uh, in front of the existing Linwood Elementary School. Uh, it's comprised of a three-story classroom wing, very similar to Manoa, and then a um, community wing, which houses the gymnasium and cafeteria, once again, similar to, to the newer elementary schools in Haverford Township. Uh, once construction of the new building is complete, we'll tear down the existing Linwood Elementary School and complete the rest of the site, including the uh, parking lot and athletic fields. And uh, to give you a, an essence of what this, this uh, very functional school, uh, uh, but also aesthetically uh, pleasing, a, a great addition to the community, um, this, this will be your front, the front door to the school. Um, as these students come to learn uh, in this great, great new place, uh, it's, a, it's an exciting gateway for the community, so your view coming up Lawrence Road there uh, into town. Uh, as you come around into the courtyard, uh, on the left-hand side there is the three-story uh, classroom wing with a, a prominent library there. So we, we want to feature, feature that space. Uh, literacy is, is a, a key aspect of primary education. Uh, and on the right-hand side, uh, in the back there, is the cafeteria, which overlooks and has great access to the playground. We have a short uh, animation. So as we come around the front of the school, uh, the windows straight ahead are administration, so they have perfect vision of uh, bus drop-off along Lawrence Road, as well as parent drop-off in the newly constructed parking lot, as well as the main entry, uh, which features secure vestibule. Uh, the three-story classroom wing, uh, tra traditional brick, along with some um, uh, uh, metal panel accents, and once again, uh, the library there on the end as a feature piece. Uh, the courtyard here functions uh, greatly, uh, shielding the, the playground, um, creating a, a safe place for uh, children to play, uh, as well as um, buffering, buffering the um, common spaces from the classroom area. So as you enter the building, uh, this is the, the reception desk that you'll be greeted at uh, if you're a visitor before being buzzed into the rest of the school. So as I said, great vision uh, through the windows. You can see the uh, bus loop and parent loops. Uh, and then entering the school, um, very durable materials, uh, but also a very bright and warmth uh, color palette uh, welcoming these students, uh, some for the first time, you know, coming to school. Uh, also great uh, activity spaces, being able to see into the gym, um, but then also creating uh, learning outside the classroom. So a learning circle um, where teachers can bring out groups of students, uh, teach on a whiteboard outside of the classroom, as well as some, some soft furniture for students to gather. Uh, but let's not forget the classroom where, where a lot of the learning happens. So uh, brand new uh, classrooms. Uh, the uh, kindergarten and first grade classrooms will have uh, toilet rooms within the classroom, similar to Manoa uh, and the other new uh, elementary schools in the district. And once again, that focal point of primary education literacy, the, the library here, very large open space. Um, Plenty of great books to read there. Uh, and the gymnasium, um, because the bids were fortunate, uh, we were able to recommend um, procuring wood flooring in the gymnasium, um, which is a little bit of a bonus. Once again, that cafeteria at the end of the corridor overlooking the, the playground, great ease of back, back and forth um, from recess to lunch. So aside from, from all the pretty pictures and, and the great building um, that's to come, we have been busy. Um, so we put the project out to bid in February. 
Um, through March, we received bids back. Um, we reviewed it with both district administration and shared um, the bids with the facilities liaisons. Uh, we've also been doing our due diligence um, with all of the bidders. So as the, the bids came in, uh, we had a great representation um, of, of most of the, the primes. Um, so multiple bids, uh, honing in that, that low bid number there. Um, so we actually have uh, two uh, prime contracts which will be awarded to the same uh, low bidder. Um, and then uh, a separate bid for the general contractor and electrical contractor. And just for clarification, yes, go ahead. Um, we have to go with the lowest bidder. Correct, correct. By, so, by public bid, we, we have to take the, the lowest bidder there. Um, but the other numbers represent the other bids that were um, submitted for the project. Um, because the bids came in favorable, um, in review with um, district facilities, the facilities liaisons, um, the, some of the alternates that are recommended um, here in this list will be taken. Um, and a lot of them are um, to improve the already great materials that were built into the design. Um, so for, essence, for example, um, some upgraded flooring, the flooring um, that was in the, the base bid, um, durable. This is an extra l level of um, durability that we're able to build in, uh, as well as some additional pieces like sod for the outdoor th athletic field. That way we'll be able to play on the outdoor athletic field sooner than if we were just planting grass seed um, and other items such as, such as those. So as we look at the total uh, project budget, um, on the left-hand side, there are the three uh, estimates from uh, schematic design, design development to the construction. Um, we see that the general construction bid came in uh, a little bit under what we were expecting it to. Um, so that allowed us some extra money to take some of those alternates that we were looking at. Um, and then the plumbing, HVAC, and, and electrical numbers came in right about where we expected them to come in at. Um, so all that said, we originally had a total project uh, cost of $36.5 million. Um, we're able to reduce that anticipated total project cost to a little over $34 million. So we're saving some money uh, based on these favorable bids that have come in. And as for uh, next steps, um, if approved tonight, tomorrow, uh, KCBA, we will send out uh, intent to uh, award contracts to each of the prime contractors. And then we'll be following that up with uh, notice to proceed uh, by roughly May 17th, which then would begin construction on site in June uh, with anticipated uh, completion of construction uh, in 2021 of the school. So if there's any questions, I'm, we're here to answer. <laughs> questions or comments from the board? Would you be able to walk through some of the, um, the, the fail safes that are in place? So we, we know we have to go with the lowest bidder. Sure. Um, but how are we ensuring that the taxpayers are going to be getting the best product for their money um, and a quality product? So how, I guess how are these contractors vetted? Sh sure. So. Um, well, in addition to vetting, so part of that due diligence um, practice, um, we were able to, to speak to the um, contractors. Uh, we met with the, the general contractor, um, sat down, walked through, made sure they knew exactly what the project entailed, um, what was included in their bid. Um, and between KCBA and, and CB development, we feel comfortable you know, recommending going, moving forward um, with accepting th these bidders. Um, in addition to that, during construction, um, KCBA will be out there observing that all of the um, designed portions, of the, you know, the design is, is conforming to, the construction is conforming to the design. Um, and CB development will be out there every day, eyes on the ground, taking a look at and, and making sure that they are doing what needs to be done. Yeah, and just to, to um, second, uh, or, or 
expand on some of the things that uh, Ryan said. You're going to get a quality project because you hired a quality designer. So it starts with the planning process, and I think the planning process here was uh, long, and, and it was necessary. It's part of, it, it takes a year, basically, to design a project, and, and that's what we took. And I think that the, the, the quality is, starts at the design. And then, as Ryan said, you've engaged um, owner's reps in CB development who have the experience to manage not only the process of construction, because you're taking on a huge risk to, to build a building, but managing your risks and making sure that the contractors work towards completing the work as designed. I just wanted to point out a couple other things. You know, we are awarding the contracts tonight, and the project budget includes a contingency. So you're going to see us, this isn't the end of the day either, it's the beginning of a journey that we're going to be on together for the next two years, and it's a, a group effort. It's going to be the architect working in conjunction with CB development, and we managing and um, guiding those three prime contractors who are working on, for you. But we're out there as your owner's rep with the experience of, you know, we've been in business 26 years, we've been managing large construction projects, not just school construction projects. So we, we have the experience to look forward and try to, try to um, keep your, your costs down, keep it on schedule, and anticipate when, project, when problems may occur and act on it before it gets to be a problem. So you'll see us, you know, in the community, you will see us coming here uh, with change orders uh, pretty much for the next two years. And we anticipate that. You know, the designer, while as good as KCBAR, they aren't perfect, and they can't possibly have foreseen everything that's gonna occur on this project, nor have detailed every single aspect of the project. So that's why we have a contingency. And, and we're hoping that um, at the end of two years, you have a great building and we have some money left over. Uh, but so ho hopefully it kind of like gives a bigger perspective of how, how the process will be uh, going forward. For the timing, just to set expectations, it said June. Part of June is in the school year and part of it is in yeah. summer break. When would we expect to see the first bulldozers on site and stuff like that? Well, it, it starts with, you know, very slowly. I mean, we'll be awarding these contracts. We'll be pulling together all their paperwork. In early June, they'll start setting up some of the um, fencing and some of the earth um, uh, prevent, you know, erosion control s sediment um, measures. Mm -hmm. And then you'll start seeing the work happen in earnest after the school year. I'm noticing that most of these bids are, are fairly close in range to each other. Is that evidence that a lot of these contractors are seeing the same thing with the design in yeah. terms of, of how it was developed and whatnot? That's exactly it. And, and that, that's, you know, we took a lot of time during the design. KCBA, you know, did a good job designing it. We reviewed those drawings both at the schematic and the design development and pointed out, you know, things that could be improved. So I think we worked as a team to to have an end product that resulted in these type bids. Other questions or comments from the board? Sure, I'd just like to say thank you to the administration and my fellow board members and all the members of the construction and design teams that have been working on this so hard. Uh, this is a huge investment in the community, um, not to be uh, sneezed at, $34 million. Um, so I also want to thank the taxpayers of this community who, uh, anyone here from Linwood? <laughs> Who've bought into this from the very beginning as well as all the other residents of Haverford Township to go along with this investment. It's long overdue. Thank you very much. Thank you. And also uh, be remiss if I did not acknowledge the the work and the cooperation of the township uh, planning commission zoning board uh, board of commissioners and we thank them very much for their good work in getting us to this evening so. okay that's it for the conference agenda
On to the business meeting. Item number five is uh, information purposes only. Secretary to submit for insertion into the minutes the financial report as of March 2019. Item number six, I'll accept a motion to approve the official minutes from the April 4th, 2019 regular public board meeting. Move. Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number seven, I'll accept a motion to approve budget transfers in the amount of $51,773.57. Moved. Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? Roll call vote, sir. Dr. Allen Stuck? Aye. Mr. Fleischer? Yes. Ms. Larson? Yes. Dr. Martin? Yes. Ms. Minchie? Yes. Mr. Sinto? Yes. Ms. Wiedemann? Yes. Mr. Feinberg? Yes. Motion approved. Item number eight, I'll accept the motion to approve disbursements from the following funds as listed. The general fund, $3,949,999.61. Capital projects, Linwood, $25,520. And food services, $130,000. $208.98. Moved. Seconded. Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number nine, I'll accept a motion to approve the following donations from the Haverford Township Education Foundation. $20,000 for the basis program, $5,000 for Chatham Park Playground. Moved. Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? Can I just say that it's really nice to see, after looking at such a wonderful donation, what our students bring from what they do. I mean, it's, it's really nice to see an investment both in time and energy from our faculty and staff, and, and to have that be, um, you know, encouraged with a, with a monetary figure, I think, is um, really uh, a, a nice gesture. So thanks to all involved for that. Here, here. I would also, if I could, just put in another plug for the Ed Foundation and the run on Saturday. Um, this, how long is this? How long has the group been in existence? Fifteen years. Fifteen years. So for fifteen years, it hasn't always been easy to ask people to donate, and then turn around, take a look at the money. There's many uh, professionals who consider just where the money will go to benefit all of our students and, and faculty here in Haverford. So I congratulate the Ed Foundation on once again stepping up and stepping in where somebody asks for something that will help our kids. So the race is Saturday at 3 o'clock for the kids' walk, just in case. And I hope it's, I hope it's sunny. <laughs> Any other comments from the board? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number 10, I'll accept a motion to approve the budget and adopt resolution number 03-20-1A for the Delaware County Community College. <coughs> Excuse me. For the 2019-2020 fiscal year in the amount of $96,976,312.50. Haverford share of that is $1,323,446. Moved. Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? Is there a copy of that provided? There wa it was on the website for the board. I don't know if it's in here. While you're lurking, I'll just explain that this is a, um, I'm the liaison to the Delaware County Website. Community College Board. This does represent a small 1% increase year over year. Uh, the community college and uh, their CFO are committed to maintaining fiscal responsibility and not just passing that along to the sponsoring school, school districts. In return um, for this sponsorship, we do get a nice break on tuition as well as wonderful dual enrollment programs through our high school. Is that is that the budget or the re, is the resolution is that the resolution zero three two a one two yes. oh one mm -hmm. oh, okay and weren't They're we given the, the budget same. in like a spiral bound oh, copy so. at our last meeting three weeks yeah. ago yes. yes okay we got a Manila folder everybody got a Manila folder yeah I remember 
Any other questions or comments? Envelope, manila envelope. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Item number 11, I'll accept a motion to approve the <clears throat> resolution appointing the following individuals to serve as trustees of the Delaware County Community College for a six-year term ending June 30th, 2025. Corinne A. Caldwell, Donald L. Heller, Robert W. McCauley, and Kevin B. Scott. Moved. Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number 12, I'll accept the motion to approve the stormwater controls and best management practices operations. That's 13, Larry. Oops. Forgive me. Uh, item number 12, I'll accept the motion to approve a professional services contract with the Center for Responsive Schools Incorporated to provide consultation slash training in the responsive classroom approach at a cost of $21,000. Moved. Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? Um, could someone speak to what that training would look like? I mean, responsive classroom is incredible, and I'm glad to see that we're bringing them in. Uh, that is four full days of training, a total of 28 hours, and for 30 participants. So it, it, it is a substantial amount of money, but for us to send participants um, to another area for training, we would not be able to train as many. So we'll be able to have 30 of our teachers trained. And this is primarily for elementary school, or? Yes. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Great stuff. Now on to the stormwater <clears throat> controls. Item number 13, I'll accept the motion to approve the stormwater controls and best management practices, operations, and maintenance agreement with Haverford Township in connection with the new Linwood Elementary construction. Moved. Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? I want to point out what this is about. Is that for each of our three brand new schools over my time, Chestnut, Wold, uh, Manoa, and Linwood, previously there was no stormwater control and it was washed off. This was not our intention, but that's where it was historically. So in the construction of each of these three schools, including Linwood, under the present standards, we are improving the life of people who live downstream of it, okay? We're not necessarily was our idea, but it's a fact. Mm -hmm. And so we'll be, the impact of the school district on the community is larger than we would have thought. That's what this is about. Any other questions or comments from the board? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number 14. I'll accept a motion to approve the easement agreement with Haverford Township in connection with the new Linwood Elementary construction. Moved. Mm -hmm. Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? All uh, in. Can someone explain what the specific easement is? Like, what does that encompass? That's if you're if you're familiar with the property and there's a small. It, it may not even be as as wide as the table that we are seated at. Um, Semi-paved walkway. All right, that's what it refers to. In layperson's terms, someone else would have a very different <laughs> explanation. Yeah, okay. Any other questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number 15, I'll accept the motion to approve the subdivision and land development improvement and maintenance agreement with Haverford Township in connection with the new Linwood Elementary construction. Moved. Move, second. Moved and second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number 16, I'll accept a motion to award the bid for the new Linwood Elementary School's general construction to E.R. Stubner at a total cost not to exceed $18,295,000, including alternate number 1B, 2, 3, 5, 6, 10, 11, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, and 41, contingent upon approval of bonds and insurance and subject to audit. Moved. Seconded. Moved and second. Any discussion? 
Who can name all the prime numbers in that list? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say bingo. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking of when they used to read the snow numbers on yes, KYW. Snow, yeah. <laughs> all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We're Just building a school, kids. <laughs> We're building a school. Item number 17, I'll accept a motion to award the bid for the new Linwood Elementary School HVAC to JBM Mechanical at a total cost not to exceed $3,672,000, contingent upon approval of bonds and insurance and subject to audit. Moved. Second. second. Moved and second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number 18, I'll accept the motion to award the bid for the new Linwood Elementary School plumbing to JVM Mechanical at a total cost not to exceed $1,499,500, including alternate number 15B, contingent upon approval of bonds and insurance and subject to audit. <clears throat> Approved. <laughs> you don't have that much power. It's Linwood. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I'll I moved second. it. Second. Second. Him we'll second. Moved and second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number 19. I'll accept a motion to award the bid for the new Linwood Elementary School electrical to Westcott Electric Company at a total cost not to exceed $3,091,000, including alternate numbers 18, 21, 37, and 39, contingent upon approval of bonds and insurance and subject to audit. Moved. Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number 20, I'll accept a motion to award the bid for the district-wide concrete repairs to Premier Concrete Incorporated at the following costs. Replacement sidewalks, $12 per square foot. New sidewalks, $10 per square foot. And replacement curbing at $35 per linear foot. Moved. Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> Superintendent's report, Dr. Rushi. I ask you to approve the, uh, to accept the retirements as are listed in item number one. Moved. Second. second. Moved and second. Any discussion? Two are bus drivers, right. so we need new <laughs> hirees, please. No. Precisely. <laughs> yes. And certainly would like to uh, acknowledge the long-term service there, 29 years. It's a good long time. And the board will have an opportunity to do that. We are going to be inviting all of those who have retired this year to one of our June um, board meetings and, and recognize their years of service. Great. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. I ask you to accept the resignations that are noted in item number two. Moved. Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. And I ask you to approve the appointments that are identified in item 3A through 3H. Moved. Second. <laughs> Moved and second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Before moving on, I would just like to acknowledge um, Nicole Battistelli. That name may sound familiar to you. Uh, she certainly, when you see Nicole, will recognize her. She's been at that podium a number of times um, over her tenure in the district, doing an outstanding job uh, presenting whether it was enrollment data or kindergarten registration information uh, and things about pupil services or special education. Uh, Nicole has an, an ability to imagine what's possible to see big pictures and never lose sight of what the immediate needs are uh, and does so with a very personal touch uh, and a human approach uh, to her work so we're delighted that we're going to be able to keep nicole working with us uh, and have her serving in the capacity of our director of pupil services as neil evans moves into retirement yet again. <laughs> so nicole thank you for Uh, 
I ask you to approve the leaves of absence that are listed in item 4A through 4D. Moved. Second. second. Moved and second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. And finally, I ask you to approve the student educational excursions that are described in item 5. Moved. Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ritchie. Board reports. Mr. Sinto. Um, from the uh, PSBA liaison end of things, uh, Advocacy Day in Harrisburg is uh, next Monday. I know several of us will be there, and several people from around our area will be there as well. So I look forward to that. It will be uh, an enjoyable experience. Um, and uh, there are also on the PSBA web page, um, I didn't know this, that we have, first of all, we have a Keystone Education Radio, which is a podcast that uh, is available to all of us on various topics. I didn't even know. It. It's pretty good. There's some, uh, some interesting topics there. I'll forward that to everyone. Um, and there's also uh, a um, spring learning webcast series. Uh, available that I will forward to everyone. The April 30th topic is teaching the facts and dispelling the myths about PEASERS. And the May 7th topic is annual school safety and security board reports. So I will pass that along to everyone as well. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Larson. Um, so I had the chance last night to attend a discussion on race and education inequity. Um, it was focused specifically on um, racial disparities in education funding in Pennsylvania. Um, and we are, as we know, um, the worst when it comes to that disparity between how um, our wealthier districts are funded and our um, poor districts are funded. Um, we're also approaching the 65th anniversary of Brown versus Board of Education. So one of the questions that was posed last night is what has changed? How far have we come? Um, which is, you know, pretty important to consider. Um, something else we can um, point to is, you know, we have the fair funding formula now, isn't that great? Um, but it's also important to realize that only 9% of our current education funding in the state is going through that formula. And it will be 35 years before 100% of our funding goes through the formula. Um, so that is a huge problem. And, you know, it's one thing to say, well, oh, we're in Haverford, you know, we're doing well, this doesn't really affect us. Um, but it does. We, we could be getting, if we actually were getting what were our fair share through the fair funding formula, we would be getting $328 more per student. Um, and given our student population, that's around $70,000. So it's not an insignificant amount of money. Um, but we should also be incensed that there are districts where students of, that are majority students of color and they are receiving far less than their fair share. So they are $1,000 and below what they should be getting if all of our money went through the fair funding formula. Um, so we were encouraged to reach out to our representatives, and I encourage you all to do so, um, because I think 35 years is far too long to wait. Um, also, I just wanted to give a plug for the Twilight Run. I have a team. It's called Team Gritty. Um, if you know the, the infamous Flyers mascot, the formal name of the team is Team Gritty, educating today's gritlets to become tomorrow's gritisons. Um, we, we have a goal of raising $1,000. We're almost up to 500. Um, and just seeing you know, the students come out tonight and the work that's going on with playground improvement at Chatham Park and just you know, where the money for basis funding is going um, is incredible. So I encourage everyone to come out and support the Ed Foundation. Whether you come dressed as gritty or not, that's <laughs> optional, um, but hope to see everyone on Saturday. Um, a couple things. I know there are several of us going tomorrow for board training and um, or not tomorrow Saturday um, so it's one of those I look at the forecast and I'm a little sad to be spending like eight hours inside doing training but it will be a good uh, learning experience for all of us um, I want to give a shout out to our third to eighth graders who are busy taking PSSAs and jumped right back into that after uh, spring break and wish them well in taking those tests um, and I know that some of our 
neighboring districts have passed uh, the change in school time and pushed the high school start times back and that has um, understandably generated some interesting conversation in our district and um, there's a state study that is going on um, and I look forward to learning from that and from the experience with some of our neighboring districts to see you know what that might mean for um, our township and the start times of school. Great. Dr. Martin. I um, kind of want to talk about what we did tonight. First of all, for cool 34 million bucks, okay, <laughs> we invested in giving our children the best place that we can afford to uh, learn and our staff the best place in order to work. And that has dividends, which I'll get to in a minute or two. But on route, I'd like to note that we made three agreements today with the parallel universe, the township has the same stockholders, us, just a different legal entity. We wouldn't know, but in route, we had all kinds of enthusiastic cooperation and help from officials and citizen boards and so from the township. I need to tell you that I've been living here for 37 years in exile from the Red Sox Nation, and I've never seen this place function so well that everybody's on the same team in that way, the help of the township. Now, the other thing I saw tonight was really the effect of what we do three student presentations. We had the science fair uh, kids from the elementary school, Chatham. We had Elizabeth articulating on behalf of her fellow colleagues at the high school. We had four or five groups of people, of students. And the basis group gently and professionally saying, I have a right to my place in the stunt. All right, that's what we saw tonight. So what we have here is a whole set of different ages, different roles of self-confident, articulate, knowledgeable, and professional students. That's what we do here. This is a great place to be a kid in order to give yourself the tools in order to then take the wheel of your own life. Thanks, Joe. That's pretty soliloquy. Yeah. I think we should just all go. Like, how do you follow that? <laughs> <laughs> Drop the mic and walk away. Wow. Kevin, wow. approved. I, no, I, I was just going to say, again, I really appreciated the student, um, the students from the science fair and the students who spoke. And the more students we can get at the board meetings, the better. It's just, it just brings such life and it brings the work that we're doing to, to life right here in front of us and for all the people who get the joy of watching this on TV. So the more we can bring them, the better. All right. Earth Day on Saturday. Can I please go paperless from now on? Yes, you, yes, you can. End of my report. Trees grow back and they suck up CO2 when they're growing. <laughs> <laughs> the report's over, sir. <laughs> Susan. I have no report. Thank you. Wow. Okay. Is this paper from um, I would like to acknowledge that uh, several of our board members at, at uh, Two or three times their annual salary are going to be <laughs> attending a training session for eight hours <laughs> on a sunny uh, Saturday. So I want to thank them in advance for giving up time with their families. Uh, um, and it's uh, not taken for granted, and it's much appreciated. Uh, also want to mention that we have, uh, I've been following the uh, one of my duties as the PSBA Advocacy Ambassador was to encourage attendance at Advocacy Day. Um, and I can tell you that uh, as of this afternoon, 173 people had registered. Uh, in addition to that, uh, there's another 40 or 50 from the Pennsylvania uh, Association of Intermediate Units. So we're gonna rock the Capitol on, on Monday. And I also wanna thank everybody who's gonna uh, make that journey, uh, you know, also uh, for the same pay. So um, uh, the major issues uh, we'll be lobbying for are the funding, which Kristen spoke about a little earlier, um, the cyber charter uh, tuition reform, which continues to uh, uh, be interesting. I've been watching, uh, especially the House bill, and I, I think in the last week there's uh, about 12 or 15 more co-sponsors on the bill and it's very bipartisan uh, so I'm hoping that we may actually uh, see some movement in that regard um, the board met in executive session prior to the public meeting 
to have an opportunity to review personnel issues, including appointments, retirements, and leaves of absence. The board also conferred with council regarding pending tax assessment appeal lit litigation and with professional advisors regarding construction projects. Uh, just like to close by uh, again saying how great it is to see this uh, Linwood project finally get, getting started and uh, it'll be an interesting couple of years and look forward to groundbreaking, you know, yeah, groundbreaking and then to uh, go on to school. So I'll accept the motion to adjourn. Moved. Thank you, everybody.